Okay, our next example is to find the eigenvectors of this 3 by 3 matrix, given that the eigenvalues for A are 1, 1, and 5. So let me make a couple of comments about that. Number one, you can see that the characteristic polynomial for a 2 by 2 matrix is a second degree polynomial. And it seems reasonable that the characteristic polynomial for a 3 by 3 matrix will be a cubic polynomial. And therefore, as these matrices get bigger and bigger, the polynomials are going to get bigger and bigger. And you will recall from your algebra classes that, poly that roots of polynomials for larger and larger, poly uh, larger and larger degree polynomials becomes exceedingly difficult to find. And so in a lot of these examples for us in this class, we're going to know what the eigenvalues are. And so this is a perfect example. The characteristic polynomial would be finding the determinant that would require cofactor expansion where there would be variables in there. This would be a very, very ugly computation. And having a computer program tell us what the eigenvalues are is usually a very reasonable thing. Second, you'll notice that in my list of eigenvalues, the number one came up twice. We always want to list the multiplicities of the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And let me just remind you that when you were in algebra, maybe you would look at something like x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. And you would factor that to x minus 3 squared is equal to 0 and say that x was equal to 3. Well, technically, it's a second degree polynomial, so there are two roots. They just happen to both be three. And what I'm saying here is that if a root comes up more than one time, then we want to list that how many times it comes up. So the number one came up twice. The number five came up only once. All right, I'm going to need this space, so let me erase all of that. I'd like you to take a moment and pause the video and have this matrix entered into your calculator because we are going to need it. Thank you for putting that into your calculator. Now what we're going to do is tackle these eigenvalues one at a time. So I'll start with lambda equal to five. And what I'm really interested in is the, the non-homogeneous solutions to a minus five times i x equal to zero. So what I really need is the reduced row echelon form of a minus 5 times i. So let's take a look at that. So I've got my matrix uh, in the calculator, which I called a. And then I'm going to do this all in one shot. So please feel free to pause and make sure that you can do this, because we're going to do this a lot in this chapter. So I want the reduced row echelon form of a minus 5 times the identity, which is 3 by 3. So this is going to give me the reduced row echelon form of a minus 5 times i. And I get that it is equal to this. There's a row of zeros there, because there should be a row of zeros. Remember, we, are look, we set this whole thing up so that the determinant would be equal to 0, so I should see less than 3 pivots. OK, so let's go back to the problem. And we decided that the reduced row echelon form of this was equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Remember that this represents x1, this represents x2, this represents x3. So x1, x2, and x3. We have that x3 is a free variable, and x2 is going to be negative x3, and x1 is go also going to be negative x3. So what I get is that my eigenvalues, my eigenvectors are all of the vectors that fit into the span of negative 1, negative 1, 1. So these are all of the eigenvectors that are associated with the eigenvalue lambda is equal to 5. Great. Then we move on to the next eigenvalue, which was 1. So lambda 
equal to 1, I want to look at the reduced row echelon form of a minus 1 times i. Let's go back to the calculator. start over. So I want the reduced row echelon form of a minus 1 times the identity, which is 3 by 3. And I look at this. Uh, ended up with two rows of zeros. Now you should be looking at this and saying, hey, the number 1 came up as a root twice and now there are two rows of zeros. Go ahead and say it. Good, thank you for participating. So let's look at uh, what we get. So we got that it was 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. A lot of zeros. x1, x2, x3. x1, x2, and x3 are both free. And then x1 is equal to negative 2 x2 plus x3. So that would mean, I'll, we'll do a little bit more details here. This would be negative 2 x2 plus x3, x2, and x3. Which means that I would get the span of the vectors that are multiplied by x2, which is negative 2 1, 0, and the vectors that are multiplied by x1, or by x3, sorry, which is 1, 0, and 1. So any vector that can be written as a linear combination of these two that's in that span is going to be an eigenvector associated with lambda equal to 1, and any vector that is in the span of this, a scalar multiple of that vector that's in there, is going to be an eigenvector associated with lambda equal to 5. You will notice that this is very just computational. Here, put all this stuff in the right place and then, and then introduce free variables. Right at this point, we don't really know why we care about eigenvalues. Uh, these have got great, 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 great applications. But in order to understand the applications, we've got to understand the computation. And that's what we have focused on in this video.